Sup, Chooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So today, Chooms, we're going to be talking about one of the most popular prescription treatments for treating acne. I am, of course, talking about isotretinoin, which you may know better by its trade name of Accutane. So, Accutane is not at all related to finasteride, but it does share some controversy, as like with finasteride, there is a community of internet dwellers who like to blame all their problems on this particular drug. So I'm not here to downplay any of the risks that are associated with Accutane, as it is a very powerful drug with significant medically verified side effects, nor am I going to tell people to stay away from the drug altogether. Whether or not you use it is between you and your doctor, but I am most interested in the drug's association with hair loss. So what what we're going to do today is go over the risk of hair loss with Accutane use and whether there is anything you could do to potentially mitigate these risks. So, like I said, isotretinoin is most commonly known by the trade name of Accutane, although there are some other brand names like Clavaris, Claris, and other names as well. It is one of the most commonly prescribed drugs in the world. In fact, there are over 1 million prescriptions of it per year in the United States alone, and that's no surprise because acne is an extremely common disorder, as well as one of the worst cosmetic defects a person can have, almost as bad as hair loss even. It affects about 80% of teenagers and even 50% of these teens continue to have some acne when they are adults. What's especially bad though is that acne can be so severe that it can sometimes leave people with hideous scars that can only be corrected through surgery. So Accutane was developed specifically to treat the very severe forms of acne that can leave people with these crippling scars that can ruin their lives. Now you guys probably have heard me talk about tretinoin before. Well, isotretinoin is not the same thing as tretinoin, at least not quite. Both isotretinoin and tretinoin are retinoids, meaning they are chemicals derived from vitamin A. Tretinoin is a topical treatment for acne, but it is also used by minoxidil non-responders to help upregulate the sulfotransferase enzyme, which converts minoxidil into its active form called minoxidil sulfate. That is useful for hair loss sufferers who are non-responders to topical minoxidil, and I did a video on using tretinoin with minoxidil, and I'll link that video below if you're interested in learning more about that. Isotretinoin, on the other hand, is a more potent retinoid than tretinoin, and it is taken orally for severe cases of acne. As you can see, the formulas for both drugs are very similar. Isotretinoin is very effective against acne. In fact, it is the most effective acne treatment known, but it also has more side effects than topical tretinoin, including some potentially serious ones like affecting your liver. It also can cause birth defects, and it even has a black box warning that it should not be taken by pregnant women. As is common with drugs that do have a black box warning, the drug is only meant to be used temporarily due to its potentially life-threatening side effects. Most of the time, the drug is used for just a few months in order to get the acne under control, and then it is stopped and replaced with a safer acne treatment such as tretinoin or even an over-the-counter acne treatment treatment like salicylic acid. So this would be an acceptable compromise for most people, but unfortunately for us hair loss sufferers, one of the side effects of Accutane is hair loss. So before we get into that side effect, let's explain the mechanism behind how retinoids like isotretinoin can cause hair loss. Retinoids activate certain cellular receptors called retinoic receptors. This article here reports on research on cultured human hair follicles, and it shows that stimulation of the retinoic receptors causes formation of TGF-beta-2 in these hair follicles. TGF-beta-2 is a signaling protein that affects the hair growth cycle in different ways. In this study of cultured hair follicles, TGF beta-2 prematurely caused the antigen growth phase to end by causing the antigen hairs to go into the catagen transition phase and then the telogen resting phase. In addition, the retinoids impaired the anchoring of the telogen hairs into the scalp, making them more likely to fall out prematurely. So it is important to note that this process is not the same thing as androgenic alopecia, where the trash hormone DHT causes the shortening of the antigen phase and progressive miniaturization of the hair follicles. In fact, even people who don't have the genetics for androgenic alopecia can still experience hair loss from isotretinoin, and it is because the mechanism isn't hormonal. It is just drug-related, and it is a form of telogen effluvium. Telogen effluvium is a sudden loss of telogen phase hairs, and it is usually caused by some sort of external triggering event, like extreme stress, or in the case of isotretinoin, the introduction of certain medications. The good news, though, is that telogen effluvium doesn't cause permanent hair loss like androgenic alopecia does, but it is still distressing nevertheless, especially since the majority of people who take isotretinoin are still just teenagers. Now, the article stresses that the hair loss that is associated with retinoids has only been reported when they are used systemically, like with 
isotretinoin and not when they have been used topically, such as in the case when they are used in combination with minoxidil, where the antigen growth phase is actually lengthened. As the article says, quote, Although ingestion of retinoic acid is able to induce telogen effluvium in man, topical treatment of human scalp hair follicles with all transretinoic acid, meaning tretinoin plus minoxidil, may enhance the antigen prolonging effect of minoxidil. Patients receiving systemic treatment with synthetic retinoids like isotretinoin very often suffer from substantial diffuse hair loss." Unquote. So like I said, the good thing about telogen effluvium is that it is reversible over time, but no one wants to get telogen effluvium in any case, so what are the chances of getting it on isotretinoin, and what can you do to prevent it? Well, fortunately, there is a meta-analysis of isotretinoin hair loss studies that was published just this year, in fact. It's titled, quote, Comparing the frequency of isotretinoin-induced hair loss at less than 0.5 mg per kilogram per day versus greater or equal to 0.5 mg per kilogram per day dosing in acne patients, a systematic review, unquote. The authors of the study point out that the information about hair loss from isotretinoin is pretty vague. In the package insert of the Claris brand of isotretinoin, supposedly 13% of users had hair loss, but the insert doesn't say what dose these people were on. The package insert also says that hair loss can be permanent, which would be pretty worrisome if it were true, but it doesn't provide any details about this. All other isotretinoin side effects are known to be reversible, so it would be pretty strange if hair loss from the drug wasn't reversible too. Especially especially since we're talking about telogen effluvium here, not androgenic alopecia. Post-marketing data on isotretinoin indicates that 9% of all skin-related adverse events were hair loss, and 63% of hair loss side effects occurred in patients between the ages of 15 and 30 years old. So in other words, these were young people we were talking about, which makes sense because most people who have acne and get prescribed Accutane are young people, so no surprise at all there. So. There's a lot of uncertainty about this side effect, like how often it occurs, whether it's related to the dose of Accutane, whether it is reversible or not, and so forth, which is why the investigators decided to do their study in the first place. The goals of the study were to see what the incidence of hair loss really was and how quickly it occurred after starting the drug. Also, the researchers wanted to find out whether the incidence of hair loss was related to the isotretinoin dose and whether hair loss from isotretinoin really could be irreversible, which again, seems pretty unlikely given that its mechanism doesn't cause permanent damage to the hair follicles like DHT does. So, the researchers searched the medical literature and found 22 studies of isotretinoin that looked at hair loss as a side effect. There were a total of 9,783 patients in these studies, and most of the hair loss reported in these studies was self-reported by the patients themselves, which isn't very objective. But I guess if someone reports they have hair loss on a drug, that's pretty believable. Anyways, some of the studies also had dermatologists examining the patients for hair loss, and a few actually used phototrichograms, which is the most objective way to assess hair loss because you can actually count the number of hairs with a photodrichogram. The investigators looked at patients who received low-dose isotretinoin, meaning less than 0.5 milligrams per kilogram per day, as well as high-dose isotretinoin, meaning 0.5 milligrams per kilogram per day or more than that. They did this in order to see if the dose made any difference in how often hair loss occurred. So looking at the low-dose treatment group, there were 656 patients and the treatment lasted an average of 4.4 months with the cumulative dose being at 71 milligrams per kilogram. In this low-dose group, the incidence of hair loss was 3.2%. In the high-dose group, there were a lot more patients, namely 3,375, and the high-dose treatment lasted longer, an average of 6.5 months compared to 4.4 months in the low-dose group, with a higher cumulative of 97 milligrams per kilogram. Hair loss was more frequent in the high-dose group, occurring in 5.7% of these patients, so clearly the risk of hair loss was related to the dose that was being used. The investigators were also interested in how quickly hair loss occurred after starting Accutane. Unfortunately, only one study out of the 22 studies in the article examined that. In that study, 20% of patients had hair loss, and the average time until the onset of hair loss was 4 weeks, though the onset of hair loss could range anywhere from 1 to 24 weeks. There were only two studies that looked at trichogram hair counts. One study of 0.5 mg per kilogram per day dosing found that no changes happened in hair count, hair density, or percent of hair in the antigen phase on that particular dose. The other study on a higher dose of 
of 0.5 to 1 milligram per kilogram per day for a longer duration than the other study, however, did find significantly decreased hair counts, hair density, and percentage of antigen hairs. So it looks like higher dose and a longer duration of treatment can definitively worsen hair loss, which goes along with the other studies based on more subjective data from patient self-reporting. Finally, the investigators looked at the question of reversibility of hair loss. There were only two studies that examined this. One study reported hair loss in 4.34% of subjects and said that hair loss had been reported to persist after discontinuing treatment, but the statement of the study is very vague. Another study stated that hair loss was temporary. The authors of the meta-analysis concluded that there is really no good evidence that hair loss from isotretinoin is persistent, and you wouldn't expect it to be if it's just telogen effluvium since we know that's reversible. So to sum up this article, hair loss from Accutane, also known as isotretinoin, seems to be dependent on the dose of isotretinoin use. Doses less than 0.5 milligrams per kilogram per day resulted in a lower risk of hair loss than doses over 0.5 milligrams per kilogram per day. It is unclear if it is the dose or the duration of the treatment or both that are important because people on higher doses also got the drug for a longer period of time. Hair loss from Accutane usually starts after the one month point of treatment. And again, the authors don't think there is good evidence that the hair loss is permanent. The authors recommend using as low a dose of isotretinoin as possible. Intermittent dosing, say one time per month, might also help as well. In any case, prospective studies looking at different doses and treatment plans might be useful to determine the best dosing schedule to minimize hair loss. So, one factor that these studies didn't look at was the potential role of vitamin A intake in the occurrence of Accutane side effects. Vitamin A, also known as retinol, is the original retinoid that isotretinoin is derived from. And like isotretinoin, it actually can be used in high dose to treat acne. Also, just like isotretinoin, too much vitamin A can unfortunately cause hair loss. So it makes sense that if you are on Accutane, you probably want to decrease how much vitamin A you are ingesting in order to avoid additive effects on hair loss. One way to avoid this is to avoid animal products that contain vitamin A, like liver and dairy products, and instead eat vegetables that contain beta carotene, like carrots, sweet potatoes, and green leafy vegetables like spinach and kale. Beta carotene, it is not vitamin A, but rather it is a precursor to vitamin A, and the body only converts as much beta carotene into vitamin A that it needs, so you will not get vitamin A toxicity from eating beta carotene, but you also won't get vitamin A deficiency either. That way, you don't have to worry about your vitamin A intake stacking with your isotretinoin use and causing worse hair loss. So I know what you guys are thinking right now, but Kevin, you're just saying this because you're a vegan, bro. Stop shoving your liberal vegan agenda down my throat, you goddamn SJW. Well. As it turns out, this interaction between isotretinoin and vitamin A is not just speculative on my part. In fact, even the Accutane package insert warns against taking vitamin A alongside Accutane because it might worsen the side effects, which of course includes hair loss. So. It makes sense that the vitamin A you take should come in a precursor form like beta carotene, which will only be converted into the amount of vitamin A your body needs and thus won't exacerbate any of isotretinoin side effects. So I know it's probably not an easy task to convince your average teenager to switch from pizza and Easy Mac to sweet potatoes, but Accutane is a temporary treatment, so you can bear with it for a few months in order to avoid acne. Otherwise, good luck getting laid in college with acne scars. So to avoid hair loss from Accutane, here are the few things you need to do. Number one, use only the smallest amount possible. Of course, your doctor will determine what dose you use, so if they recommend a large dose, you can share your concern with them about hair loss and possibly convince them to start you on a smaller dose. Number two, avoid vitamin A, which means cutting back or eliminating animal products like dairy, liver, and most meats and fish, and try getting more vitamin A in the form of beta carotene, which can be found in most fruits and vegetables, but especially orange and red colored plants like papayas, mangoes, tomatoes, carrots, and sweet potatoes, as well as leafy vegetables like spinach, collard greens, and kale. Number three, Get on finasteride. So you may be confused by this, but let me explain. Finasteride, it won't do anything to stop the type of hair loss you get from Accutane. However, if you are not on finasteride and you then lose your hair while you're on Accutane, you may incorrectly assume it is Accutane causing your hair loss when it is really just androgenic alopecia. By taking finasteride, you can factor androgenic alopecia out of the equation and not risk permanent hair loss, since unlike telogen effluvium, androgenic alopecia causes permanent hair loss. If you're 
worried about finasteride, you shouldn't be. And I have a million videos on my channel explaining why, so go check them out. And lastly, number four, don't even bother using Accutane. There are other acne medications which are safer and do not cause hair loss like topical retinoids as well as over-the-counter treatments like salicylic acid. It's possible your acne may be so aggressive that these won't be strong enough, but at least give them a try first. Accutane is a very effective treatment, but it does come with increased risk of side effects, so at least give these potentially safer treatments a try first, at least for a few months. So go ahead and get your acne under control and remember to get into the hair loss fight early chooms because acne problems they usually go away as you get older but hair loss problems will only get worse the sooner you get both of these problems under control the less likely you'll have to worry about them in your young adulthood so keep fighting the good fight my fellow hair loss witchers and i'll see you all next time god bless